Are you ready for some great meal ideas? Well, come along with me while we go through this week's What's for Dinner. Great, easy, simple recipes for weeknight meals. Hello, family and friends. I'm Susan, and welcome to my home. On this week's menu, we have tortellini sausage soup, John Wayne casserole, pork ribs, and French dip sliders. Hey, everybody. It's Monday night. And tonight we're gonna make some soup, some tortellini and sausage soup. It's actually a recipe for the crock pot. I'm not gonna do it in the crock pot. I'm gonna do it in my pot. And I'm gonna change it up even more than that. I'm not a big fan of tortellini. I'm gonna use another type of noodle. So my ponytail is already up. Let's get to making a awesome soup on a cold night. Let's get to cooking get started on the soup. Like I said, this was originally a crock pot soup and I have adjusted it to do in my pot on the stove. I've got it heating up right now and uh, we're going to be frying up the Italian sausage. Remember I told you in my last grocery haul that I got mild instead of the spicy. It'll just have to do. That's what they had. Uh, eight ounces of cream cheese. I'm supposed to have two cans of diced tomatoes. In my stockpile, I grabbed the last can of diced. I'm about to have to do a restock in the stockpile anyway. That's going to be coming up. Um, but I've got one diced and one stewed. Shouldn't be that big of a difference. It's going in a soup. It should be fine. Um, I've also got some baby spinach to put in the soup at the very end. This is four cups of chicken broth, which I made with my instant chicken broth. Um, but it's ready to go. And, of course, I'm going to be using the penne pasta instead of the tortellini. I just don't care for tortellini. We tried it with the tortellini. I thought the soup is awesome. I just don't like the tortellini. This makes it awesome. Y'all know I love my penne. But let's get to frying up the Italian sausage and get going on tonight's supper. And... The Italian sausage has cooked now. I've got it browned up pretty good. It's time to start adding in the other ingredients. And it says to drain it, but mine really doesn't have a whole lot of drippings in it. It was kind of dry and it hasn't, you know, it doesn't have a whole lot. So I'm going to leave it in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the chicken broth there. I'm going to go ahead and put the two cans of tomatoes, which, like I said, I don't have diced. I do have one that's stewed and one that's diced. And I'll, I probably could go through with my scissors and just chop them up. All right. There we go. Now the diced tomatoes are going in. Okay. And I'm going to put the cream cheese in. Let me go ahead and get this cubed up. I've got the cream cheese cubed up. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the pot. Try to get it to separate out a little bit so it'll melt quicker. Because it does take a little bit for this to melt. Now, it did call for Italian diced tomatoes. And, of course, I didn't have any. So, I am going to put a little bit of Italian seasoning in there. Just because it called for the Italian. I know that my... Sausage is not very spicy, so I definitely want to get that Italian flavor in there. Now, let me stir it up a little bit. I knew that smells really good with that Italian seasoning. I might need to add a little bit more. It smells good. But, I think I've got everything except the spinach and the noodles in there. And I am going to go ahead and turn this up just a little bit and put the lid on it and let it simmer for about 10-15 minutes. We'll come back and see how it looks. Hopefully, the cream cheese will be melted up by that time. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes, actually. And, as you can see, there's only just a dab of the cream cheese still left in the soup. So, it's time to add the spinach, which you can do it a couple different ways. I'm just going to basically get it in my hands and tear it and put it in there. That way, it's not as big of pieces. You can put it on the board, you can cut it. It doesn't matter whichever way you want to do. I don't want to get out of board because it's like Monday night. <laughs> so I'm going to tear all my spinach real quick. And these are baby spinaches, so they're, they're little. They're not huge spinaches anyway. But whenever they cook,
cook down, they will be nice and small and won't be too big to where you have a big old bite of spinach. It'll be a little bit of spinach in whatever you're eating. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tore up and then come back. Okay, and I've tore all the spinach and I've added it to the soup. Now it's time to add the penne pasta. And I don't know how much I want to add because these always seem to balloon up more than they need to be. So I've just added enough to where I've got some floating. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid back on it and just let it cook for about 10 minutes. And then it should be time to eat some soup. Well, it's time to dish up the food, and we've got some babies that have decided to come and check in on where everything is. Buddy's waiting. Dolly's beside of me. But it's time to get some soup going on. And I've actually turned it off because I had it on pretty strong. And here it is. The tortellini sausage soup. Except it's made with penne. Crackers, of course, because that's what Danny loves. And we're ready to eat. Look at this. Look at all of that sausage and everything in there. So good. So filling. And I got some vegetables in there. And Danny will eat them, which is a plus for me. But there you go. That's what's for supper, Monday night. Hey everybody, and it's Tuesday. And we're gonna be having a new to us recipe. It is called a John Wayne casserole. Does have some of the taco vibe in it. So that's why I put it on Taco Tuesday. So come on along with me. Let's get to making some John Wayne casserole. See how good it really is. My ponytail is up. Let's get to cooking. And tonight we're going to be doing the John Wayne casserole. Beef and biscuit casserole is what it says. Um, I've got everything I'm needing. <clears throat> it, can, it has two pounds of ground beef, which is in the pan about to start. Some taco seasonings. I need some water, some sour cream, some mayonnaise, shredded cheddar cheese. I need an onion. I need some green bell pepper. I need some tomato. And I need some diced green chilies and, of course, Bisquick. And that's all it calls for. It looks like it's going to be pretty easy. Almost a dump and go. But let me get the hamburger fried up in the pan. And then we'll start adding the rest of the ingredients. And I've already got the taco meat browned up. I'm going to get it drained. And then we're going to add the taco seasoning and the water real quick. I'll bring you back in just a minute. Okay, now I'm going to add the... Taco seasoning. It calls for basically one packet of taco seasoning, which is about two tablespoons, which I just, you know me, I'm just eyeing it. It looks good. And then it's calling for three-fourth cup of water. And that's basically to let the meat simmer in the spices. And that's what the water's going to do. So I've got to turn it back up. I need to start my oven on 325. Alright, got that going now. And now the next thing is going to be mixing the ingredients in the two mixing bowls. So let me turn you around and show you what's going to happen in those. We're going to put in here a half a cup of sour cream, which I have, of course, the uh, daisy. That's my normal kind of I like to get. And then it needs half a cup of mayonnaise. And of course, I use Duke Light. Half a cup of Duke's Light mayonnaise. that in the pan. I need half of the cheese, which it calls for. One cup of shredded cheddar cheese. I need basically half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Which I'll just use that same container. So shoot, I don't need to dirty it up anymore. That looks good. That looks like about half a cup, give or take. And half of the onion. I'm gonna mix it together because I think that's all of it. Sour cream, mayo, cheese, 
an onion. All right, so we've got that mixture ready. Now we've got to start the other mixture. And I'm needing two cups of Bisquick mix. There's one cup. See the two cups. And there's two cups. All right. And I'm needing one cup of water. One cup of water. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and whisk this together. It's supposed to make kind of like a dough, which is what it's looking like it's a doing. So that is ready to roll. The next thing I need to do, here is my greased baking dish, and it says to press this into the bottom of the baking dish. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape this out. Now this is supposed to be a 9 by 13 pan. I, you know I don't have one. I've got this size. So i got to get one for Christmas. i got to get a 9 by 13, guys. Too much stuff needs a 9 by 13. So I'm going to go ahead and spread this out to the edges. All right. Now that's looking pretty good. Now let me put you on hold for a second. I've got to get another pan. I'm going to go ahead and put the bell peppers and the remainder of the onion in the pan to saute real quick. And then it looks like after that gets sauteed, we will be ready to start layering this concoction. So let me go ahead and bring you back whenever this has sauteed down just a little bit. And it's time to layer ingredients. Okay, the first thing it wants me to layer, it says I need to layer, is the remainder of the, or is the hamburger meat. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this on top try to divide it around a little bit. See if I can do this gingerly, which I doubt. <laughs> and it's too hot to use my hand, so y'all know I'm just gonna use the spatula, do the best I can, getting it all out here. Okay, hamburger is on. The next thing is the diced tomatoes, which are right here, which I'm gonna just put them around. I'm not a big tomato fan. I would have probably used tomatoes out of the can, but it calls for diced tomatoes, and that's what I'm using. All right, so that's got that. So the peppers and onions are going on next, and they have sauteed down quite a bit. So they're looking kind of good, and they're smelling really good, so let me go ahead and put that on. All right, so we've got those laid on. The next thing is the green chilies, and I'm just going to spread them around a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. I love green chilies and a lot of things. Hopefully it tastes good in this, because this is kind of like a taco bake gone wild kind of thing. Now I need to put on the remainder of the cream cheese mix, which I don't know how this is going to go, because this ain't wanting to come out. You would think, I'm gonna, I know what I'm going to have to do. I have to get my glove on and just do it by my hand, I guess, because it ain't wanting to separate really good. And that's okay. I'll just do the best I can with what I can. And I don't like latex gloves, guys. I just got me some food service gloves. It will work just as well. And the last thing is to put on the remaining cheddar cheese, which I'm just going to sprinkle some on until it's nice and covered. It's supposed to be just a cup of, sweat of cheddar cheese, but you know. I could have used Mexican on this too, but it called for cheddar, so it's all good. All right, we are completely covered and ready to go in the oven, 325, and it's for 30 to 35 minutes. So let's get it in there, bake it, and see what it looks like when it gets done. And here is the John Wayne casserole. Out of the oven, cooked it for about 30, 35 minutes. Um, it looks really good. It looks and smells really good. So we're going to tap into it, put it on a plate, and see what we think. 
and somebody is wanting to know what mama has cooked because it smells good. So let what it looks like whenever I cut into it. I know Danny's hungry. I know that he has been working out. So I'm going to give him a big little helping. And there is his helping. And let me get me some and I'll come back and tell you what I think. Okay, let's see. Let me get a taste and see what I think. pretty good. It could use a little bit of taco sauce. But other than that, it's pretty good. And I added a little bit of taco sauce to mine because it is taco meat. And that is pretty good. And this is what's for dinner. Tuesday night. And I'm going to get these ribs in the crock pot for tonight's supper. Um, I've just got a pack of country style ribs, bone end. Of course, they were on discount. You know that's how I buy them. And I'm just going to put them in the crock pot and put them on low with some barbecue sauce, my favorite kind, sweet and spicy, and some water. And I'll show you how I do that. And they all fit in the crock pot. And I'm basically just going to use the last of this that I've had it setting on its top. And then put a little bit of water in it and put that on top of it so I can shake it up real good. And then pour that on top with the water. I want to make sure that the water goes up to the top of the ribs, but not over the ribs, because they will put off some water of their own. And I do want to put just a little bit more barbecue sauce in here. All right. Now that will cook up. I've got it on low, and it's going to do that for about eight hours while I go to work. And then we'll come home, and it'll smell awesome. And we'll make us the rest of the ribs in the oven and get them all nice and ooey gooey with the barbecue sauce. So see you back when I come back from work. Hey everybody, and it's Wednesday night. Y'all saw that I put some ribs in the crock pot. Quick, easy. All I gotta do is make a side with them and we will be good. I'm gonna take them out of the crock pot and put them in the oven with some barbecue sauce on them to let that barbecue sauce get nice and sticky and then it'll be time to eat. So, this ponytail is gonna be going up because it's time to get our ribs on. And here are what the ribs look like straight out of the crock pot. I'm gonna go ahead and put them on a bacon dish that's like a strainer, and I'm gonna put some barbecue sauce on them and get them ready to go in the oven at 350. And here's what they look like before I put them in the oven, 350 for about 5 to 10 minutes just to get the barbecue sauce nice and sticky on the ribs. And they're falling apart. They're so tender. These are uh, country style ribs, not anything else. And uh, they are so good. So let's go ahead and get these in the oven and get them cooking so they'll be ready whenever Danny comes through the door. And here are the ribs. Barbecue sauce on them some noodles, some green beans, but that is what's for supper tonight. Wednesday night, and it is so good. Hey everybody, and it's Thursday night, and we're going to be doing some French dip sliders. Small little sandwiches, but French dip with some au jus. So come on along, my ponytail's up. Let's get to cooking. And tonight we're going to be doing some French dip sliders. Uh, you'll need some garlic, au jus mix, and uh, half a stick of salted butter, and half an onion. It says minced. I just chopped mine kind of fine. They'll be fine. Um, some roast beef, some slices of provolone, and Hawaiian rolls that I've already cut in half. And it calls for 
sour cream, horseradish, and salt and pepper for a dip. And I'm not into horseradish, and neither is Danny. So, we're just going to be using some mayonnaise on ours. Just as good. I'm sure it will be just fine. But let's go ahead and get working on um, getting the oven preheated to 350 and getting the au jus mixed up. The first thing we're going to do is put the buns, or the bottom half of the buns, in the baking dish. And you're supposed to add the mixture, the sour cream and horseradish mixture, which I told y'all we don't particularly care for. So we're just going to do mayonnaise. I'll just do a good little bit of mayonnaise on there. And it says to spread it all over the buns, and I am doing that. All right, nicely, nicely spread. The next thing I'm going to do is... I'm going to put the roast beef and the provolone cheese on top. Let's see. It doesn't say how many slices to use, but I assume you would want more than one little old slice. So I'm probably going to put at least two. And there's two. And layer and Here's the cheese. They're thick enough. I think one's going to be plenty. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the top on. I didn't put mayonnaise on that, so now that is ready to roll. Now I need to get the au jus made. And here is half of the stick of butter that's just about completely melted. I'm just trying to get the whisk to where it will come apart good. And now I'm going to put in not half an onion, but some onions. I don't think we're going to, I mean, I did not mince them, and I think that's going to be just fine. And the oven's ready. I'm going to put in two teaspoons of minced garlic. I'll stir that around a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add my packet of au jus mix. Okay. And two cups of water. I don't know if you can see it. Two cups of water. All right. Let me give this a little stir. Now I need to wait till that comes to a bowl, and then I'll be ready to add it to the rolls themselves. And the au jus is boiling. And whenever it starts to boil, you take it off the heat, and then we're gonna actually put a cup of it over onto the sandwiches. I'm gonna switch places with it. So you can see the sandwiches. And I am just going to use a coffee cup to get the juice out of the pot. Let's see how much I, it said one cup. And this holds just about a cup. So I'm gonna do about two or three of these. Alright, and that is smelling really good. That au jus smells amazing. And it's time to put it in the oven for 15 minutes on 350, and then we'll break it out, bring it out, and we'll cut it apart, and we'll be ready to dip in some dip plus whatever this makes up. And look at them. They look so good. Just out of the oven, look at that cheese melted. And I'm about to separate them up and put them on the plate with some dipping sauce for us to eat for supper. So, let's get them plated up. And the au jus and the French dip sliders. They look so good, and I'm sure they are. I'll take a test of one here in a minute, but let's go ahead and get this out to Danny so he can eat. Okay, and they are really moist, so I'm going to flip them over, put the top on the bottom to eat them, and let me just try them without the au jus, because look at the bottom of them. They are just moist as they can be. Mmm, they're about falling apart. Well, they're not pretty deep. But they are tasty, by golly. That is good. Mm, and it's what's for supper. Thursday night. I hope.
hope you've enjoyed this week's What's for Dinner. Four great meal ideas. Hopefully, that will give you some inspiration on making some quick and easy dinners of your own. Until next week, have a great week. Please like and subscribe, ring that bell, and let our family be a part of your family.